Hello, my name is Meeta. I am accounts and a finance trainer from Uplex. Today in this class, we will discuss part three of computation of total income and tax payable. Part one and part two is already covered by us in our previous videos, in which we have discussed how we will compute the total income. Means we have discussed all these relevant step for the calculation of total income. Step one, two steps. Six we have already covered. Means step one, two, step six we have already covered, which is relating to the computation of total income. Computation of total income. Now we will discuss step number seven and other steps which are required to be taken to calculate the amount of total income of the assessee and how we will compute the tax which is required to be payable by the assessee on such income. So the step number seven is deduction from gross total income. After calculating the gross total income in the step six, we have calculated the gross total income. Then after calculating the gross total income, we will provide the deduction from gross total income. We will provide the reduction from gross total income, just like deduction under chapter six. Deduction under chapter six, we will provide from the gross total income. From the gross total income, just like for the example, there is a SSC, Mr. Ram, and his and his gross total income GTA, sorry GTI, gross total income is five lakh eighty thousand. Out of this, we will provide deduction. We will provide deduction. Deduction under chapter six A. We will provide deduction under chapter six A. Just like ATC deduction, ATC, ATE, ATD. Just like that, we will provide a deduction so that we can calculate the net net taxable income. So that we can calculate net taxable income. So there are certain deductions which are provided and which are allowable from the gross total income. From the gross total income, so that we can calculate the taxable income of the assessee. So that we can calculate the taxable income or the total income of the assessee. The deductions, these deductions are contained in chapter six. These deductions are contained in the chapter six. Just like ATC deduction, payment of life insurance premium, PF payment, tuition fees payment, and Repayment of housing loan, mutual fund. These all are ATC deduction. These all are ATC deduction. ATD, medical insurance premium. Medical insurance premium paid by individual and HUA. Medical insurance premium paid by the individual and HUA. And ATE deduction, interest on a higher education loan. If there is any SIC, he has taken loan. For the higher education, then the assessee he will pay the amount of interest on such loan. Then such interest will be deductible. It will be deductible under section eighty e under section eighty e under section eighty e. So deduction under section eighty c means these are the some deduction in the respect of certain payment. If you make the payment of LIC premium, you make the payment of LIC premium, then you will be eligible to take deduction under section eighty c. If you make the payment of medical insurance, then you are eligible to take the deduction of medical insurance premium under section ATD. Education loan, interest on education loan, you will be eligible to take the deduction under section ATE. So these deduction are available on the basis of payment. Deduction in the respect of certain income under chapter six A, just like ATE, QQB. Under such under chapter six A, there are some deduction which are available on the basis of certain income, just like eighty QQB, eighty RRB, eighty QQB, just like royalty income, royalty income of the author of certain book other than textbook means if you are earning any if you are earning any royalty fees, so royalty income, royalty income. Then you will be eligible to take a reduction of the royalty income. You are earning royalty income on patent, royalty income on textbook. Means you have the copyright of the textbook. 
and on the basis of which you are earning the income. So it will be deducted. Deduction in the respect of other income, just like ATTT means you have earned the interest on savings bank account, saving deposit, or you have earned the interest. You have earned the interest. On cooperative saving, post office saving, then all these interests will be then this type of interest means interest on saving deposits will be deductible under section eighty T T A. It will be deductible under section eighty T T A. Eighty T T B. It is applicable for the senior citizen. Means if there is any senior citizen who is earning who is earning the amount of interest on saving deposit, if he is earning the Amount on saving deposit, then he will be eligible. Then the senior citizen person will be eligible to take a deduction of such interest under section eighty T T B. Under section eighty T T B. So these deduction are also available. Other deduction, deduction under section eighty U, deduction under section eighty U, which is available to those person who had disability. Deduction under Section Eighty U is also available. It is available to the those person who has disability, just like there is any SSC who has any disease, just like cancer. So, in the case of this, such person has the such person has can claim deduction under Section Eighty U. These deductions are allowable subject to the satisfaction of condition which are prescribed to the relevant section. Means these deductions are available. When the condition which are given in the particular section are properly fulfilled, means when the deductions which are given in the particular section are fulfilled, then these deductions are available. Then these deductions are available, and these deductions are available on certain limits. Means in the respect of these deductions, there are certain limits. Just like under section eighty C, you can take max to max one lakh fifty thousand deduction, one lakh fifty thousand. You can take maximum one lakh one lakh fifty thousand under section eighty RRB. You can take maximum three lakh deduction. So in this case, the deductions are limited. Me some deductions which are limited, which are limited just like under section eighty TTA. You can take the maximum deduction of ten thousand interest on saving bank saving in saving deposit. You can take maximum deduction of ten thousand. Maximum deduction ten thousand. So there are some deduction which which have limit which have limit. So after calculating the gross total income, after calculating the gross total income, we will provide or sorry we will provide a deduction or deduction of deduction. Mean we will deduct the amount of deduction which are given by the income tax act, and on the basis of this we will calculate the. Total income, net total income of the assessee. The next step is total income. After deducting the deduction, we will we will find total income. So the gross total income when we reduce the deductions, when we reduce the deduction of chapter six a, then from the gross total income, then we will find total income of the assessee. Means means the gross total income. Gross total less deduction under chapter six a is equal to total income. Total. So total income is equal to gross total income minus the deduction which is provided under chapter six. It should be round of nearest multiply of ten means the gross means the net income should be it should be in the round of of nearest multiply of ten. It should be nearest of multiply of ten means it is should not be just like ten thousand two fifty three. It should not be just like that. It should be ten thousand two fifty two fifty six. Means which can be multiplied by tax. The tax is calculated on the total income of the assessee. When we will calculate total income, 
net order income or the taxable income then it will be taxable means the tax will be calculated on such income on such total income after calculating the total income we will apply the rate of tax we will apply the rate of tax on such income after calculating the total income of the assessee we will apply the taxable rate we will apply the rate of income tax so that we can calculate the tax which is required to be payable on such income so after calculating the total income we will apply the income tax rate the income tax rate which are specified by the finance act the rate which are specified by the finance act normally in the case of individual in the case of just like in the case of individual there is a basic exemption limit is 2 lakh rupees thousand means up to 2 lakh rupees thousand if there is any assessee whose total income is 2 lakh rupees thousand then he is not required to make the payment of tax means such income will be exempt up to 2 lakh rupees thousand up to 2 lakh rupees thousand so for the individual there is a slab rate and the basic exemption limit at present the basic exemption limit is 2 lakh 50000 this means that no tax is required to be payable if there is any assessee whose total income is up to 2 lakh 50000 rupees up to 2 lakh 50000 rupees means the basic exemption limit is 2 lakh 50000 up to 2 lakh 50000 if there is any assessee he has the income up to 2 lakh 50000 then he is not required to make the payment of tax the rate of tax and the level of income are as follows the rate of tax just like that income where the total income does not exceed 2 lakh 50000 the income does not exceed 2 lakh 50000 it is the tax rate is nil the income exceed 2 lakh 50000 but up to 5 lakh but up to 5 lakh income more than 2 lakh 50000 but not exceed 5 lakh then the rate of tax will be 5% of amount by which the total income exceed 2 lakh 50000 means for the example if there is any assessee whose total income is whose total income for the example 4 lakh 50000 then then the tax will be 4 lakh 50000 minus 2 lakh 50000 into 5 percent means 10000 Ten thousand rupees is the amount of tax. It is the amount of tax. And where the total income, where the total income of the assessee is more than five lakh, but up to ten lakh, more than five lakh, but up to ten lakh rupees, then the tax will be twelve thousand five hundred. Twelve thousand five hundred plus twenty percent of the amount, which is more than five lakh rupees, means. If there is any assessee whose gross total income is eight lakh fifty thousand, then the tax will be twelve thousand five hundred. How twelve thousand five hundred means five lakh to two point means sorry two point five lakh to five lakh. It will be four. So five lakh minus two point five lakh into five percent twelve thousand five hundred plus. the income is more than 5 lakh but up to 10 lakh so 10 lakh sorry sorry 8 lakh rupees thousand minus 5 lakh because 5 lakh till 5 lakh already taxable into 20% it will be total tax will be 82500 so 12500 plus 20% of amount by which is exceed to 5 lakh exceed amount is 3 lakh 50000 because 8 lakh 50000 minus 5 lakh 3 lakh 50000 is the excess amount so it will be taxed so if we are they where the assessee whose total income is more than 10 lakh then the income will be taxable at rate 30% means 1 lakh 20 1 lakh 12500 plus the income which is more than 10 lakh it will be taxable at rate 10 it will be taxable at rate 10% just like for the example there is a assessee whose income is 12 lakh 80000 so the tax will be first 0 to 2.5 lakh it is nil it should be zero and 2.5 to 5 lakh 
so it will be five percent means is equal to five lakh minus two point five lakh into five percent twelve thousand five hundred five lakh to ten lakh it will be twenty percent so the tax will be is equal to ten lakh minus five lakh into twenty percent. One lakh and more than ten lakh. So so it will be thirty percent. Means the income is twelve lakh eighty thousand minus ten lakh into thirty percent. Eighty four thousand means the total tax. The total tax will be one lakh ninety six thousand five hundred. One lakh ninety six thousand five hundred is the amount of total tax if the total income of the S I C is twelve lakh eighteen thousand eighty thousand. So if the income is up to two lakh fifty thousand rupees, no tax, zero tax. If it is more than two lakh fifty thousand, but up to five lakh rupees, then the tax rate will be five percent on such amount. If it is more than five lakh, but up to ten lakh, then twelve thousand five hundred plus twenty percent, which is more than five thousand, which is more than five lakh. If it is more than ten lakh, then twelve thousand five hundred plus one lakh means one lakh twelve thousand five hundred plus thirty percent, the amount which is more than ten, thirty percent of the amount which is more than ten lakh. So these are the tax rate. These are the tax rate. Which are applicable, which are applicable on individual and HUF, individual and HUF, and these rates are applicable for the person whose age is up to sixty year, whose age is up to sixty year. But if there is any person whose age is more than sixty year, but up to eighty year, then such a, then such basic exemption limit will be increased. It will be increased. Means. If there is means in the case of senior citizen, means a person whose age is more than sixty year but up to eighty years, the basic exemption limit will be increased. It will be three lakh rupees. Means up in the case of senior citizen, up to three lakh rupees, no tax will no tax will be charged, no tax will be payable. But the three lakh to five lakh, if the income is more than three lakh but up to five lakh, then the tax rate will be five percent, five to ten. Twenty percent and more than ten, thirty percent means all other rate will be same, but the basic exemption limit will be increased. And in the case of super senior citizen, super senior citizen means the person whose age is eighty year or more than eighty year, the person whose age is eighty year or more than eighty year during the previous year, then the basic exemption limit will be increased to increase to five lakh rupees. Means up to five lakh rupees, no need to make the payment of tax. After five lakh five to ten, he is required to make the payment of ten percent and sorry twenty percent and more than ten lakh, he he will require to make the payment of tax at rate thirty percent. So in the case of senior citizen, in the case of senior citizen, the tax rate will be where the income does not exceed three lakh, the tax will be zero. Means in the case of senior citizen, in the case of senior citizen. It will remain same, but there will be change here only. Three lakh. The rate will be tax will be zero. It is three lakh two. Five lakh. Five percent. Five to ten. Twenty percent and more than ten. Thirty. This will be the rate. And in the case of super senior citizen. Super senior citizen up to five lakh up to five lakh zero and five to ten lakh more than ten lakh twenty percent and thirty. So where the total income does it not exceed if it is more than if it is not more than three lakh, then no need to make the payment of tax. Tax rate will be zero. Where the income exceed more than three lakh, but up to five lakh, then the tax rate will be five percent 
of the income which is more than three lakh, which is more than three lakh. Where the total income of the SIC is more than five lakh, but up to ten lakh, then ten thousand rupees plus twenty percent of the income which is more than five lakh, which is more than five lakh. Where the total income is more than ten lakh, then one lakh ten thousand plus thirty percent of the income which is more than ten lakh, which is more than ten lakh. Means we will calculate the income in the same manner, just like that. Just like that. In the case of super senior citizen. The income up to five lakh rupees, the tax bill rate will be zero. Where the income is more than ten lakh, more than five lakh, but up to ten lakh, then the tax rate will be twenty percent of the income which is more than five lakh. Twenty percent of the income which is more than five lakh, and the income is more than ten lakh, then one lakh plus thirty percent of the amount which is more than ten lakh, which is more than ten. Lakh. So this is the these are the tax rates which are currently applicable, which are currently applicable on the individual and actual. In the case of company and the in the case of firm, there is a flat rate of tax. There is no basic exemption in the case of company and in the case of firm, there is no any flat means there is no any basic exemption. There is a flat rate of tax which is normal thirty percent. The rate of tax has to be applied on the total income which is compute. The tax liability means the total means the tax rate is applicable on the total income of the SIC on the basis of which we will calculate the tax which is required to be payable by the SIC. Rate of tax in the respect of certain income are provided under the Income Tax Act. Rate of tax in the respect of certain income is provided under the Income Tax Act. Just like in the case of long term capital gain. In the case of when there is any transfer of any long term capital asset, and there is a and on the transfer of such a long term capital asset, there is the profit, there is a gain. So such a gain, so such a gain will be taxable. Such a gain will be taxable at the specific rate, means at the separate rate. Long term capital gain on the other asset, certain short term capital gain, certain short term capital gain. For that, there are different rates. Just like if there is an SSC who has income winning from lottery and crossword puzzle, then such income will be taxable at the rate of thirty percent, flat rate thirty percent, flat rate thirty percent. Long term capital gain, it will be taxable on twenty percent. It will be taxable at twenty percent. Short term capital gain, it will be taxable at fifteen percent. Means the income tax act also contains some specific rate of income tax. Some specific rate of income tax. So, just like section one one two a, long term capital gain exceeding one lakh on the transfer of equity share of the company and the unit of equity oriented fund and the unit of business trust, it will be taxable at the rate ten percent. If the amount of capital gain is more than rupees one lakh, if it is more than one lakh rupees, and the section one one two a, so that the income tax act it contain normal tax rate as well as some specific tax rate. Just like for the example, there is a as I see, and he earn one lakh rupee thousand rupees. Winnings from lottery, winnings from lottery. Then such income will be taxable at the rate thirty. Such income will be taxable at the rate thirty percent. At the rate thirty. The special rate of tax has to be applied on the respective component of the total income. Means that the special tax will be applicable on the respective hub, respective amount. Means. If the tax, if the capital gain is taxable at rate twenty percent, then only the amount of taxable, only the amount of capital gain will be taxable, not whole amount, not whole amount. And after means just like for the example, total income is five lakh, out of which fifty thousand rupees is the amount of long term capital gain, and it will be taxable at twenty percent. Now four lakh fifty thousand will be taxable at the slab rate, means according to the rate which is provided by the finance and the finance means. Means on the balance amount, the tax slab rate will be applied. After providing the basic exemption limit, we will calculate the amount of tax which will be, which is required to be payable on such income. The unadjusted basic exemption limit can, however, be adjusted against the long term gain which is taxable under section one one two and one one two a, and short term capital gain under section one under triple one a means. If there is any SSC, for the example, there is any SSC whose total income, total income, for the example, it is 
basic exemption limit is 150000 150000 so in this situation their basic exemption limit is 150000 rupees 150000 rupees so we can adjust means such out of means we will take one lakh this one and the balance 50000 we will take from this amount from capital means now the taxable amount will be only sorry this 5000 3000 so now the taxable amount will be 5 5000 means if the an amount means the means the basic exemption limit is not totally exhausted from the other incomes from the other income then we can use we can use long term capital gain or the short term capital gain to exhaust such income to exhaust or to take the basic exemption limit to take the basic exemption limit. step number 10 step number 10 revealed under section 87a revealed under section 87a is that if there is any assessee whose total income whose total income is less than or up to 5 lakh rupees if there is any assessee whose gross total income sorry whose total income is up to 5 lakh rupees then such assessee shall be eligible to take the revealed under section 87a he shall be eligible to take the revealed under section 87a just like um, the assessee there is a assessee for the example mr ram and his total income is 4 lakh 50000 his income total income is 4 lakh 50000 so up to 250 it is nil from more than 250 it will be taxable at the 5% means the tax will be 4 lakh 50000 minus 2 lakh 50000 Into five percent means the tax is ten thousand. But as per the section eighty seven a, if there is any assessee whose income, whose gross, whose total income is up to rupees five lakh, whose total income is up to rupees five lakh rupees, then such person shall be eligible to take the rebate under section eighty seven a. The amount of rebate under section eighty seven a will be twelve lakh fifty thousand or or tax on rate. So sorry, tax on income. Sorry, whichever is lower, whichever is less, whichever is less, whichever is less will be taxable. Whichever is less, sorry, which will be less will be eligible for the rebate. So in this situation, such ten thousand rupees will be fully. Applicable or allow for the debit, fully allow for the debit under section eighty-seven A. Means in the case of Ram, if the income is up to rupees, means if there is any assessee whose income is up to five lakh rupees, then there is no need to make the payment of tax up to two fifty basic exemption limit, and after two fifty till five lakh till five lakh the rebate. Under section eighty seven A is applicable. The rebate under section eighty seven A is applicable. Is applicable. So, in order to provide tax relief to the individual taxpayer whose total income is up to five lakh rupees and on whom the slab rate is five percent is applicable, then the rebate under section eighty seven A is applicable is available to these assessees. And these and but there is a condition that such. Rebate is applicable for the those assessee who are the resident of India, who are the resident of India, and whose gross total, whose sorry, whose net total income or total income does not exceed five lakh, is not exceed five lakh. The rebate shall be 
the rebate shall be amount of income tax which is payable on such income or twelve thousand five hundred rupees whichever is less. Twelve thousand five hundred whichever is less. However, the rebate under section eighty seven is not available in the respect of tax which is payable at the rate ten percent on the long term capital gain. Means if there is a re if the such a if such a four lakh fifty thousand it will have any capital gain just like fifty thousand is the amount of capital gain which will be taxable at rate ten percent. Then such basic exemption limit is not available on such a, on such. A, Fifty thousand means then the BC exemption limit will be applicable only on four, only on four. So if there is any capital gain which will be taxable under section one one two A at rate ten percent, then the rebate under section eighty seven A will not be available on it. On surcharge, surcharge is in addition to tax means first we will calculate the amount of tax then after we will. Apply the provision of surcharge, and the surcharge provision will be applicable, or it will be chargeable on the income tax, on the income tax, on the income tax. In the respect of surcharge, there are some basic basic limits. There are some basic limits, and we have already covered it in our surcharge class. Is that if there is any individual HUF, AOP, or BUI? Whose income, whose total income is more than fifty lakh, then the provision of surcharge will also be applicable. Will also applicable mean the surcharge is in addition to the tax which is payable by the assessee on such a taxable income. The surcharge is in lab is a labiable as the percentage of income tax which is labied on the income tax. In case when there is any assessee whose total income is more than if there is any assessee whether this individual HUF, AOP, BUI, whose income is more than fifty lakh. Then the provision of such as will be applicable. Just like that, where the total income of the assessee is more than rupees, where the total income of the assessee, including dividend, capital gain, it is more than fifty lakh, but up to one crore, more than fifty lakh, but up to one crore, then the such as will be ten percent. Then the such as will be ten percent. Such as will be ten percent. For the example, dividend income ten lakh. Short term capital gain twenty lakh, long term capital gain twenty five lakh, and other income forty lakh. This is more than the total income is more than fifty lakh. Meaning means it is a ninety five lakh. So such as will be applicable on such amount. Means the first we will calculate the tax on such ninety five lakh. Then after we will apply or we will add the amount of such as. The amount of such as will be ten percent of income tax, which is come to be ten percent of income tax. If there is an SSC whose gross total income is more than ten crore, whose gross sorry sorry whose net total income he is who the SSC whose total income total income is more than one crore but up to two crore more than one crore but up to two crore then the rate of such as will be fifteen percent then rate of such as will be fifteen percent means the dividend income is ten lakh short term capital gain sixty lakh. Long term capital gain is sixty five lakh, and other income fifty lakh means the total income of the such is eight one crore eighty five lakh. And on such income, we will calculate tax. And on such income tax, we will we will calculate we will calculate such as amount, and the such as will be fifteen percent of the check. Such as will be fifteen percent of the check. Just like for the example, there is a such is Mr. Mohan. And he has following income, dividend income, just like ten lakh, and short term capital gain. For the example, twenty lakh, twenty lakh, and long term capital gain, twenty five lakh, and other income, other income. Just like forty lakh, forty lakh. So these are the total income. For the example, the tax. For the example, the tax on such income. For the example purpose, it is two. It is twelve lakh fifty thousand. Twelve lakh. Twelve lakh fifty thousand is the total amount of tax on such income. So the tax will be. So the surcharge will be ten percent of such income. So the total tax. Huh? The total tax will be this. Total tax will be twelve lakh fifty thousand plus 
twelve thousand five. Sorry, one lakh twenty five thousand. Means so the tax will be thirteen lakh seventy five. Means the tax surcharge will be calculated on the amount of tax, not on such amount. It will be calculated on tax amount. It will be calculated on tax amount. So, if there is any SSC whose income, whose total income is more than two crore but up to five crore, then the rate of surcharge will be twenty five percent. Then the rate of surcharge will be twenty five percent. Example number three, just like dividend income, sixty lakh rupees. Short term capital gain fifty four lakh rupees, long term capital gain fifty five lakh rupees, and the other income three crore. So on such income, we will calculate the surcharge at the rate twenty five percent. Means on such income, first we will calculate the amount of income tax, the amount of income tax, and after calculating the income tax, we will add the amount of surcharge at the rate twenty five percent. At the rate twenty. The rate of surcharge on the income tax payable on the portion of dividend income and the short term and the capital gain which is charged due to tax under section triple one a means short term capital gain and one one two a long term capital gain and it is not exceeding twenty five percent. It is should not be more than fifteen percent means the tax on tax of surcharge on dividend income and on the capital gain it will not be more than fifteen percent means. We will calculate a surcharge of fifteen percent on these income on on the dividend income or on the capital gain income and on the balance amount. We will calculate a surcharge at the twenty five percent if it is more than five lakh. If the total amount is the income is more than two crore but up to five lakh, means the capital gain or the dividend will be tax will be surcharge at fifteen percent and other income will be surcharge will be surcharge at the twenty five percent at the rate twenty. Means in this case, such as sixty lakh, fifty four lakh, and fifty lakh. These total amount will be taxable at fifteen percent. It will be sorry. It will be surcharge on such amount. First, we will calculate tax, and it will be surcharge at fifteen percent. And such as three crore income. First, we will calculate the tax on such three crore. Then after we will apply the provision of surcharge, and it will be taxable at twenty five percent. The surcharge will be twenty five on that on the total income. Sorry, on the tax, thirty-five percent of total income tax. Where total income of the assessee, excluding dividend income and the capital gain, it is more than ten, more than five crore. If they, if they say assessee whose total income is more than five crore, excluding the capital gain or excluding the dividend income, then the rate of surcharge. On the income tax payable on the portion of dividend and capital gain will be fifteen percent. Means on the portion of capital gain, on the portion of dividend, the amount of such as means the rate of such as will be fifteen percent. Will be fifteen percent, and the other income, other than such, other than capital gain and other than dividend, will be taxable or will be surcharged at the rate thirty-seven percent. At the rate thirty-seven percent means, for the example. There is a dividend income of sixty lakh rupees and short term capital gain is fifty lakh and long term sixty lakh, sixty five. Then these total income sixty lakh, fifty lakh and plus sixty five lakh. These will be taxable. These on such amount the surcharge will be fifteen percent. The surcharge will be fifteen percent, fifteen percent. And on such six crore, on such six crore other income the surcharge rate will be thirty seven. Then the surcharge rate will be thirty seven percent. So first we will calculate the tax on these income. Then after we will apply the provision of surcharge. Where the total income, including dividend and capital gain, is more than two crore, which is not covered in point three and four, means the total income of the assets, including the amount of dividend, including the amount of capital gain, and it is more than and such income is more than. Two crore rupees. Then the rate of surcharge will be fifteen percent. The rate of surcharge will be fifteen percent means the total income will be surcharge. Means the surcharge will be fifteen percent on the total amount of income tax. Means the dividend is fifty five lakh. Short term capital gain is sixty sixty lakh. Long term capital gain is fifty five lakh. And the income is one point one crore. It is more than two crore. So. Total two point eight crore rupees will be surcharge. Mean the levy of surcharge would be at the rate fifteen percent. At the rate fifteen percent on the total amount of income tax. On the total amount of income tax. So 
on the basis of this we have covered we have covered part 3 of computation of total income and tax payable in which we have discussed about some other step some other step there are some other step and there are some other part of such a topic so that kindly consider all that topic of such a or we means all the classes of such topic so that you can understand how we will compute and how we will calculate the amount of tax of total income and how we will calculate the tax which is required to be payable on such income so thank you so much for watching this video and there are two another parts part 4 and part 3 kindly consider also part 4 and part 5 sorry part 4 and part 5 kindly consider it also so that you can properly understand full concept thank you so much bye bye